Welcome into the Going to Beyond the Food Show. And today it's an exclusive episode only for our community member. And we're going to talk about the holidays. Five tips to thrive and enjoy the holiday without spiraling down. I'm so excited about this. This is the first time ever that I do an exclusive podcast. But I think I'm going to love this. So perhaps watch for more in the new year. If you don't listen to our podcast, well, hello, we have a podcast that's going to be on the Food Show 215 episode all about emotional eating, body image, intuitive eating, mindset, emotion, all the things about self-development, growth and healing your relationship to food and body. Now, if you're listening to this in an audio format, know that there's actually a video version of this as well. If you haven't seen the video, please email us at info at stephaniedoze.com and we're gonna shoot you the video as well. If you are a longtime listener of the podcast and you've never actually seen my face, well, hello, and this is the behind the scene. This is where the podcast gets created every single week. This is my office. This is where I work with clients. This is where I create my program and my courses. And this is the microphone and the environment in which I, I record your episode every single week. So in my traditional podcast style, I'm going to ask you a question right now. Are you ready? Let's do this. Five tips to thrive and enjoy the holiday without spiraling down. Number one, let's talk about the food because that is typically where most of us get hung up or lay the blame upon us spiraling down. Really, it's not about the food, right? That's my whole brand, going beyond the food. So what is the best approach when it comes to food? Stay mindful. You have to stay present with the food and enjoy everything else that comes along with the food. Be present to the home or the environment that you are. Take notice of the beautiful table setup. Look at the turkey, look at the table smell the deliciousness of the apple pie, of the turkey, of the cookies. Focus when you eat on being present with everything else that comes along with food. People are also a huge element of this. That's why as human, we are inborn emotional eater. Part of our brain connects food to our emotion when we are around people, and that's the whole goal of the holiday, right? Now, our brain gets tripped up when we restrict food, right? Our brain then takes away the focus on what the holiday is about, everything else that comes along with the environment of the holiday and food, and gets us to only focus on the food because you've told your brain that you'll never be able to get this food again, so might as well enjoy it right now. So that leads me into tip number two. Don't restrict the food. Now, if you are at your beginning journey of questioning diet culture, of perhaps not dieting, these words of not restricting are going to sound like I'm crazy right? I'm, I'm hearing you saying right now, well, Stephanie, if I allow myself to eat everything at Thanksgiving and at the holiday, I'm going to eat everything in sight. I know how you feel. And I know that's what your brain got you thinking. And the only reason why you're thinking that is because that's what you did before, right? The infamous cheat day or the holiday treat the holiday indulgence, all with the undertone that what you're doing with food, enjoying the Thanksgiving dinner, is incorrect, it's bad, it's not healthy, 
by always with the undertone of labeling our engagement with food as somewhat bad. And because we don't want to be a bad person, we do it in this moment, but we right away put a barrier in our head, we'll not do it again, right? I'll be really careful the next two weeks. I will not eat anything sweet for the reminder of the holiday. Let me just have that one pumpkin pie tonight. Know that the more you restrict, right, the more you impose yourself limit, you will always bounce back. Think of it as a pendulum. You know how a pendulum swings left and right? Right? So when you restrict, you bring the pendulum all the way up and you're holding it there very tightly. That's you on a diet. And when you let go of the pendulum, what does it do? It completely swing the other way, right? And it swing back and forth and back and forth with momentum for what appears to be a long time. That's what dieting is. So the only reason why you eat everything in sight and, and you can't control yourself is because you think that you're going to restrict again. That's otherwise called also the last supper syndrome, right? Think of it as the last supper, right? Thanksgiving being the last supper is the only time you can indulge. Might as well eat everything in sight. So if you can, if you're more advanced in your journey, you know that already. That's a base principle of intuitive eating. We need to release the rules around food. We can't restrict. So if you follow tip number one around food and stay mindful, be present with the eating experience without imposing yourself rules at the end, you perhaps will swing like the pendulum, but not nearly as strong as if you're going on the diet the next week. If you are afraid of not restricting because of the people around you and the judgment and the words of other people, that leads me into tip number three. Don't engage. You don't have to respond to people. You don't have to engage in any type of discussion. So for you, if you are more perhaps in the midst of ditching diet culture or in the midst of learning intuitive eating and you are afraid of going to the Christmas party or the Thanksgiving or the holiday because you're going to hear about cousin Julian talking about her diet, or you're going to hear people comment on your body, on your food, you don't have to engage. So for an example, if somebody comes up to you and says, are you really going to eat all these dinner rolls with the mashed potato? That's a lot of carb. Don't engage. Just say yes and leave the discussion. You are fully entitled to leave the discussion, excuse yourself. I always say to my clients, pretend that you want to go to the bathroom. Just say yes, use one word, yes or no, and leave the discussion. Excuse yourself. Or another tip, redirect the conversation. So when the question comes about body, diet, and you don't want to engage, Perhaps don't even answer and redirect something like, have you heard about Aunt Julie so and so and so and so, right? Now, if you don't want to engage, like you don't want to deal with this discussion, you're not equipped yet, you're not yet advanced enough into your journey to be solid in your belief and you don't want to get trigger back, Prepare yourself before going to the event. Prepare yourself other topic of discussion. Perhaps how you can redirect discussion, right? Talk to yourself. I don't have to engage. If somebody comments, just say yes or no. Create an excuse and leave. Or start talking about X, Y, and Z. Be prepared both mentally and also with redirection topic so you don't have to engage in that discussion. Tip number four, be in your power. So I'm gonna give you a mantra here that I want you to remember. My body, my rules. 
my body, my rules, my body, my rules. It's your decision to do what you want with your body. Other people will want to impose their view, share their perspective. That's their story, their problem. I've just taught you how to not engage. Perhaps you want to leave. If you're more advanced, perhaps you want to get into a discussion with them because you're really strong in your belief. But at the end of the day, your body, your rules. Now, being in your power, as many of us have difficulty with our body image, right? That's the centering point of chronic dieter is wanting to change our body. I want to give you a tip on clothing because this will make the biggest difference of you being in your power. Do not try to fit in to an outfit that doesn't fit anymore. If you're going to an event that's already perhaps a difficult environment for you and you try to suck yourself in into a dress that doesn't fit anymore, that's too tight, you will be reminded every minute of the time you're going to be there that you put on some weight and that's going to trigger all kinds of chaos in your mind. Now, if you're not yet equipped with self-coaching technique, this will be a disaster. So go get yourself right now an outfit for the holiday that fit properly, that is not tight, and that you are comfortable in, that you can then be in your power. We're not going to discuss the whole, I don't want to invest in new clothes until I lose some weight because that's not likely going to be your reality anytime soon, because the priority, if you're listening to this podcast or following me, is ditching diet culture, making peace with food and your body. So effort around weight loss at least needs to be paused. So go get yourself an outfit for the upcoming holidays that fit. I am not a fashion blogger. <laughs> fashion is not my thing, though I have a colleague that have been working a lot with recently. If you follow me on Instagram, her name is Ashley Duro. I'm going to link her somewhere around this video. She's a plus size fashion blogger that is amazing. And she gave me two store, two recommendation of store for the holiday. So write this down. Eloqui. Now this is a very French word trying to be said in English. I'm going to spell it for you. E L-O-Q-U-I-I. -I. Eloqui is one of the most friendly environment, fashionable environment for holiday dresses. And then the second recommendation is online anthropology. So the store name anthropology, but online because that has the most diversity of size and selection. If you are Canadian, my recommendation is additional, additional. So these are three store, Eloqui, Anthropology, and additional. Go shop right now. So you have something available for Thanksgiving if you're an American and the holiday for the rest of the world. One more tip about being in your power. If you are really beginning your journey and you are really doubting this whole world and you need support, ask for support. Perhaps from your partner, perhaps from a cousin, an aunt, a friend that's going to be present in the party or the event with you. Call them up, engage with them and tell them what you're doing with yourself, like the journey that you're taking to making peace with food in your body, and you would like their help at the specific event. Like literally, if you signal them, or if you say the secret word, they have to come and get you out of the discussion that makes you feel terrible. So set that up ahead of time. But at the end of the day, it comes back to one person, you. And your ability, which is tip number five, to set boundaries. 
Boundaries is a very difficult topic when we are not in our power because boundary requires you to say no to others in order to say yes to yourself. That's what boundaries are all about, right? It's to making you the priority, right? So boundaries, it's the ability to say to the person who's going to ask you, how's your diet going? For you to be able to say, I'd rather not talk about this today. What about X, Y, and Z? That is boundary setting, creating that boundary, telling the person that you rather not talk about this and redirecting the discussion. Now, one thing that you have to own is the fact that you've dieted for a long time and you've talked about your diet and you've complained about your body for probably many years to those people. So it is normal for them to ask you about it because that's what you did every single year, right? You talked about how much you perhaps hate your body and what is the next diet you're going to do or the diet you're currently doing. So the people around you in those events expect you because that's what you've always done. So that's not them the problem. It's you owning your story and now setting boundary that you rather not talk about this subject. Now, if you are an advanced student of mine, perhaps this year is going to be the year where you're actually going to share what you're doing. Like if you're comfortable in doing that, I would welcome you to do it and do it in a non-threatening way. Don't engage in talking about body neutrality, intuitive eating, ditching diet culture as if everybody needs to do that because that's just another diet talk, right? Remember the last time you talked about paleo or keto or Weight Watcher and you tried to push it onto everybody? You don't want to do the same thing with intuitive eating or body image or ditching diet culture. So let me give you a quick sentence if you're more of an advanced student. It could be something as, um, I've actually decided to stop focusing on my weight this year and get back in touch with my hunger and fullness. Have you heard of intuitive eating before? You give them a question. If they say no and they redirect the conversation, then stop talking. If they say, no, I've never heard of it, what is it? That's your cue for you to share what you've learned in the last 12 months or since the last time you saw them. Again, not pushing your belief on others, but simply creating an environment so they can ask you questions if they need to. So these were my five tips. Now I have a bonus one. And that bonus one is going to be for anyone that's done any type of work with me in any one of my program, the Intuitive Eating Project, Body Acceptance Project, Academy. I want you to practice self-coaching, right? If you've done the self-coaching program in the Academy or you've done the reframing exercise in the Intuitive Eating Project, it is time to pull out those thoughts, those, sorry, not those thoughts, but those tools and to inspect your beliefs prior to going to the event. Don't wait to manage a crisis during the event, but instead take perhaps 5, 10, 15 minutes now in the next few days to think about what could be the hurdle for me and start reframing your thoughts. So you are in possession of a new perspective prior to the event. So that was my bonus for all my students. So let me recap here before we close the podcast. Tip number one, it's not about the food, but stay mindful when you are present with the food. Tip number two, don't restrict. Restriction will just end up being a binge later. Tip number three, Don't engage with the people who want to talk to you about diet and weight loss. Find a way out and set boundaries. Tip number four, be in your power. My body, my rule, and find yourself clothes that fit so you feel comfortable during these events. And then tip number five, setting boundaries. 
depending of where you are in your journey, right? You perhaps want to talk about intuitive eating or not. And if not, prepare yourself boundaries and ways out and topic of redirection. So this is it. I've also linked below this video. If you're looking below the video, there's three article that I've wrote over the past year about the holidays and how to take care of yourself or how to even engage with your children and the holiday. But here's my biggest advice to you. Enjoy. The number one goal of the holiday is human relationship. So focus on that instead of the food. Also, with the holiday period come the new year. So make sure that you plan some time in December to reflect on the last 11 and a half months and see what worked for you, what didn't work, but most important, where do you want to go in 2020? Don't forget, it's not only a new year, it's a new decade. If you need some help in setting yourself goals that have nothing to do with your body or with your diet and create a big master plan for self-care for the upcoming year, right below this video, there's the on diet 2020 30 day challenge it's super affordable i would highly recommend that you join me i'm going to create this environment throughout the month of december and beginning of january so you can take that time to reflect create your goal then create a plan to make the goal happen and also i'm going to teach you how to be more productive I hope you enjoyed this exclusive podcast. If you did, please send me a note on social media, on email. I would highly enjoy hearing back from you. As I end every podcast, I love you, sister. And I'll see you on the next podcast. Come over to iTunes and follow the rest of the show there. Bye.